Proverbs chapter 4, verse 13. It says to keep fast, uh, take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her for she is your life. It's talking about instruction. Instruction is so important. And you have to hear an instruction for what it is, not for what is not. One thing that you always must cultivate in yourself is that when you hear an instruction, don't add to it and don't take away from it. An instruction is always a clear directive to accomplish something in a specific way. If you accomplish it another way, it has no enjoyment for God. Saul did not recognize that God was getting pleasure with all Amalekites being killed, not some. So he wanted to offer up some. You can't add on to God's instruction. God's instruction is clear and plain for everybody's life. And if you learn to stick to instructions, you'll have an easy life and you won't have any regrets because you stick with the instruction. Now, when you go away from instructions, you have heartaches, you have pains, you have things that backlash on you. One reason why you should Follow instructions. One of the reasons you should follow instructions because enemies will defeat you and having an advantage against you in those portals of time where you're not following instruction. You'll lose battles on earth. When you lose battles, your life goes a direction that is not supposed to go. Another reason you should follow instructions is because you don't want to keep on repeating the same season over and over again. The same season is not fun. It's actually boring. It's actually irritating. And there are people that get irritated and they're not even recognizing, why am I irritated? Are you irritated? You irritate because you're in the same season. You're not following God's instruction. You're following your own understanding. That's why the Bible said, lead not to it. Because in that same cycle, that same season, you're going to get irritated. Why is nothing changing for me? What instructions are you obeying from God? I don't know what he instructed me. Well, exactly. If you don't know what he instructed you, imagine. You've been missing all this time. You don't know what he instructed you. Well, I don't know what he's saying to me. Imagine, you don't know what he's saying to you, but you keep on eating food. You keep on going to sleep. You got your schedule set in place. You, you, there's no sacrifice. So what are you showing him that I want to hear what you're saying? I want to know what your instruction is. What is the sacrifice that you're making towards that instruction? So always remember this. If you go weeks and months and days without knowing God's instruction, and you're still functioning at your original schedule. You are not making any push to actually know the instruction. Because if you was hungry to know the instruction, your pursuit, your acts, your, your reach, your hunger after, your chase after. Remember, um, what's that, Jeremiah chapter 29? Jeremiah 29 says, that you will seek me and you will find me when you search for me with all your heart. Jeremiah chapter 29. I wonder if that's verse 13 and all. Verse 11 and all. Verse 13 and all. Look what it's telling you. You will seek me and you will find me when you search for me with all your heart. People are not searching for God with all their heart. So how are you going to enter into a phase where instructions are clear to you. You have to search for the Lord with all your heart. All your heart. Every, what does it mean to search for the Lord with all your heart? That means that you slow down to meditate on the Lord and you think about him. 
you picture him, you imagine him, and you train yourself to make your soul interested in him. And then you pursue him with your meditation, your contemplation, what you ponder on, what you are constantly thinking about, it's on him. You place your love. Remember what um, Psalm 91 says, that this man has set his love upon me. You can set your love upon Jesus. When you set your love upon Jesus, that means that he means more to you than anybody. So when people start rejecting you, they start looking at you funny, they start treating you weird, that don't faze you because you have set your love on him. Now, saints, I'm going to tell you like this here. It's okay for you to love people. But it's not okay for you to love people more than Jesus. Because people are niggas. I'm, I'm <laughs> people are niggas. You need to hear that. People are niggas. Uh, sometimes your parents are the niggas. Sometimes your brothers, sisters are the niggas. Sometimes your, your neighbor that you live next to are niggas. People are niggas. So when people manifest their niggerhood, at least you'll have the strength and the healer on your side to mend your broken heart when they mistreat you, when they defy you, when they reject you, when they, people are niggas. And um, as you walk with God apostolically, you need to know this. You'll watch people fall by the wayside. You'll see people turn to their sin. You'll see people start to blaspheme. You'll see people start to lie on the Holy Ghost. You'll see all type of weird stuff going on in people's lives. Don't let that phase you. Keep moving forward. Finish your race. That's why this walk is a one-on-one -on -one walk. You don't walk with two by two. You walk one by one. The Bible said two was going to be working in the field. One would be left. One will be taken. Two will be laying down in the bed. One will be left. One will be taken. What is that telling you about? It's telling you that even in marriage, it's a one-on-one -on -one walk. People are not going to be judged two by two. It's every man for themselves. So you yourself keep your eyes on Jesus and you grow and you manifest. You know, throughout life, you'll meet people and they will act like they know God more than you. Meanwhile, they have all type of demon spirits inside of them. And they're, they're so boastful. They'll, they'll come. They'll try to force you to feel like they know God more than you. I told you people are niggas. Don't study that. Focus on Jesus and let the Holy Spirit begin to take you where they couldn't go. Let the Holy Spirit show you. Let the Holy Spirit train you. Let the Holy Spirit give you eyes and let the Holy Spirit give you instructions. I want to say this to you. Pray for instruction. It says, Lord, Lord, instruct me. And Lord, I pray for a grace to hear your instruction and heed your instruction. I pray for a grace to hear your instructions and heed your instructions. Pray for grace to hear the instructions of the Holy Ghost and heed the instructions because you could hear it and you could very well disobey it. If you look at your life, you haven't obeyed the Lord even when he made things clear to you. You chose to go opposite to him. So you got to look at that and not be oblivious. You, you, can't, you can't act like, oh, I don't have something in me that hates God. You need to be honest. You do have things in you that hate God. Because if you have one moment where you know that God wants this and you do opposite to it, that is hatred for Jesus. The Bible says, if you love me, keep my commandments. That means what have I demanded of you? What, what is the straight and narrow path that I've shown you and I've said, you know, this is what I want for you. This is where I want you to learn my word. This is what I want you to serve. This is where I want you to have. If you find yourself ever drifting away from that, you know that you have things in you that hate God. You have to be honest. Honesty is the beginning of repentance. It's the beginning of purity. 
You have to be honest. You can't say that, oh, I love the Lord with all my heart. No, don't say that you love the Lord with all your heart. Don't say that you love the Lord with all your heart if you have places in you where you get away from his regiment. You get away from his instructions. Stick to the Lord's instruction. Pray for his instruction. Ask him to instruct you. Ask him to give you commandments for your life every single day. Tell the Lord that you want to hear his voice. Tell the Lord that you want to hear his voice. And now I, I want you to hear this. Um, the Holy Spirit do not keep on talking when he can see that you're not interested in what he's saying. Um, a lot of people, they get to a place where the Holy Spirit touches things that they have already connected their heart to. So when he speaks, is is irritating to them because it's, it goes against what they have already put their hand to the plow to accomplish. You can't receive the instruction of the Holy Spirit if you're independent. Let me tell you this. One of the fastest ways to destroy favor is to become independent. Become independent. If you want to lose the favor of the Holy Ghost, you want it to decrease, just become independent. Start to make decisions that you feel, I have a right to make this decision, so I'll make it. When you become independent, it's opposite for, from you being dependent on the Lord. Like, you'll make decisions that you feel is best for you or, or what will, will you'll accomplish what you pictured in your mind accomplishing, even if it's not God's will. And this brain is very dangerous when you're not receiving God's instruction because this brain will go into things that it's not supposed to go into. Just remember that. So I want you to remember sticking to instruction. What did Proverbs 4.13 say? Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her. For she is your life. It didn't say that she is your death. She is your life, which means that she is your connectivity to the will of God. She is your connectivity to your destiny, your purpose. It says, let her not go. Why does it say let her not go? Because people let instructions go. You forget about it. You casualize God. You become too comfortable in his presence that you become corrupt in his presence. You become so nonchalant in his presence that you start to lose your fear and your reverence. It says let her not go. People let the instruction go. And they become bitter. They become enemies of God because they let the instruction go. They become unfaithful. They become unwise because they let the instruction go. They lose power. They lose purity. They lose prayer because they let the instruction go. When people let instruction go, they take on a spirit that's very, very deadly. And remember, I told you, if Satan could ever destroy you, Satan not only destroys you, Satan uses you to destroy other people. So now you are the one telling them to eat of the tree. <laughs> wow. You are the one lying to them and trying to trick them and trying to deceive them. When Satan successfully deceives somebody, they become deceivers for others. Now you're recruiting people for Satan. Now you're telling people how to fall short of the glory of God because you fell short of the glory of God. As a woman, you don't want to you don't want to destroy no man. Imagine if you think that you're a woman of God and you have a man right now that's an ungodly man right now. You're sleeping with that man and you're with that man. You're a destroyer. A lot of times people say, oh, no, no, this man is destroying me. He's unsaved. No, you're destroying him too. 
Because even though he's evil and wicked, you have knowledge to know that there's certain people that you're stop, not supposed to intermingle with. And you know that the Holy Ghost ain't give you a license to have sex with that man. You know the Holy Ghost didn't give you no knowledge to, to, uh, uh, to, to please that man and to be around that man. And you're not winning him to the Lord. I, 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 I want to get this clear. How many times do you say that you are of God and you have people that's not of God and you didn't convert them to the Lord? So why in the heezy for sheezy are y'all in connectivity with each other? You can't talk about, oh, I'm being a light to them because your light ain't do squat for them. We, we often say, oh, you know, uh, uh, when, you didn't win them. How, how long have you known them? They not influenced by you. And, and let me just tell you something. Let me tell you something about man, an ungodly man. An ungodly man not going to hear Jesus from your mouth while you giving him tun tun. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, I want you to understand that. They don't even respect you as no woman of God. So please, don't get it twisted. You need to understand how uh, ungodly man, ungodly man, while he's sleeping with you and he fornicating with you, he not looking at you as no woman of God. So don't think that you, you win it. No, you're not winning nobody because they look at you as a worldly woman that they could sleep with and they can have sex with and that's how they view you. So so don't 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 come to Thomas some you know you try and win the per no you you can't win them. You can't win them because they are already looking at you like you just a normal person. You just a woman that they can sleep with. It's a curse to want a hood man. It's a curse to want a hood woman. It's a curse to want somebody that's from the projects that got projects in them still. It's a curse. It's a curse to be with somebody that enjoys drama. It's a curse to desire somebody that's not a peacemaker. It's a curse. It's a curse when you are attracted to somebody that is problematic, they're troublesome, they're violent. It's a curse. That's not sexy. Over the course of life, you'll hear men and women, oh, I like me a hood man. Oh, I like me a hood girl. I like that. You weird. You sick. Imagine, people, you, people won't say, I like me a Jeffrey Dahmer. Why? Because you think that Jeffrey Dahmer was weird. But you'll hear people all say, I, li I like me a, I like me a girl with attitude. You weird. You sick in the mind if you if you you're attracted to toxic people. You're attracted to people that don't got self control. That's what you like. And then you want to have children with somebody like that, and then raise up another generation that's like that. That's weird. Let me just say this to you as well. When your heart does not have the wisdom of God inside of it, you like weird things. You like weird people. Why did the Bible say train up a child in the way that they should go? Because even children come into this earth realm weird. You have to train them to be wise. You have to train souls into the wisdom of God because weirdom and wickedness is so, is so widespread. Remember this. Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her for she is your life. Take fast hold. What did the Bible say? Take fast hold. See, you can't be slow with instructions because it'll, it'll go past you. You'll lose the energy to do it. You'll lose the, the commitment to do it. You'll lose the fire to do it. You got to take fast hold of instruction. 
Take fast hold of instruction. Take fast hold of instruction. Take fast hold of instruction. Because if you don't do it fast, you'll lose it. Take fast hold of instruction. Because if you take your time, you're going to find yourself an enemy to that instruction. If you take your time, you're going to give place to the devil to start turning you against that instruction. You'll hate that instruction. You'll despise that instruction. You'll find other options other than that instruction. Take fast hold of the instruction. Hold it fast. Fast hold. Hold it fast. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. And you'll let go of strongholds. Hold it. You'll let go of strongholds, demonic holds. You'll let go of lust holds. If you hold it, 